Thank you for keeping up and so late to take care of us. Oh, that's quite all right, sir. Uh, this gun is an excellent selection, Mr. Holmes. You ought to get plenty of grouse. Grouse, the little birds, not worth the trouble of eating after you shoot them. <laughs> you wait till you hook into your first salmon, old boy. Well, mind you have everything at Baker Street first thing in the morning, Stimson, because if we're not in Scotland by the time the salmon stop running, the fish will hold Dr. Watson personally <laughs> responsible. <laughs> I'll have everything at your rooms first thing in the morning. Thank you. Good night. Uh, good night, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night. Ah, uh, Scotland. I shall be glad to get away from this place. The smell of heather after the rain, the crisp night air, with the stars shining clear in the sky. Bed in the bush with stars to see, bread I dip in the river. There's the life for a man like me, there's the life forever. Huh? Trumpet Louis Stevenson. The Treasure Island fellow? Yes, and many other lovely islands too, Watson. Hello. Oh, so the old girl has lost her emeralds, eh? Now, Holmes, you promised no more cases until the holiday's over. Don't worry, old fellow. I was just thinking she's well rid of her emeralds. Green was never a very becoming colour to the old trout. I say, you dropped your paper, sir. I'm afraid you're mistaken. No mistake. I saw you drop it. You've just been told, sir, that you made a mistake. But it is the gentleman's paper, sir. Be your fool, my good man. Mr. Holmes told you that he didn't have a paper. Uh, yes, but I was quite wrong. I'm so sorry. That is my paper. There are times, Holmes, when your behavior is utterly inexplicable. Oh, oh. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, may I recommend a visit, gentlemen? A visit where, sir? The best fish and chips in London, Fish gentlemen. and chips? I never eat fish and chips. My friend doesn't eat fish and chips. We loathe fish and chips, sir. Well, come to think of it, old fellow, some fish and chips might go very well just now. Thank you for your suggestion, sir. Come on, Watson. Fish and chips, filthy stuff. I wish we'd brought our cat. Oh. Gentlemen. Evening. May I suggest uh, that, sir? Two and six. No, I think I'll have some fish and chips. And you, sir? Just a minute. I'm sorry, dear. We serve the best fish and chips in London, sir. Make it two, will you? I think I'll have a, an order of. Uh... Oh, gone. I order for both of us. What do you order for me? Fish and chips. Fish and chips. <laughs> Nice place you brought me to, I must say. I say, take a look at this fishbowl. Where? Right in my soup. A fine thing, it might have stuck in my throat. Just a moment. Fishbowls. I'd rather eat in an alley. Go and eat in an alley, then. That's where you probably belong. Likely as not, we'd both be poisoned. What's up, Holmes? I don't know. Yet. Something definitely is. Thank you. Fish bones. Fellow probably was right. Looks like something one might find in an alley. That's it. What's it? Fishbone alley, of course. Oh, what's the price got to do with it? It's not the price, it's the numerals. Two, six, number 26, Fishbone Alley. Everything these last few minutes has been directed towards giving us that address. Oh, come, Holmes. Who on earth would go to all that trouble? Duchess's photograph. Duchess Brookhill's house, Berkeley Square. About eight o'clock last night. I've got it. Eight o'clock. But you said you weren't interested in the old trout's emeralds. I'm not. Well? We've just been invited rather circuitously, I admit, to appear at number 26 Fishbone Alley at eight o'clock tonight. A lot of mumbo-jumbo, if you ask me. 
Probably no such place as Fishbone Alley. Oh, yes, there is. It's off Mount Street. 7.45. We've just got time if we walk briskly. Hmm? Good night, Ducky. Oh. But, uh, look here, Holmes, you... You're not, you're not thinking of going there, are you? Naturally. Someone must want to see us rather badly to have gone to all that trouble. But hang it on, it may be a trap. Well, if it is, at least it promises to be an interesting one. Sinister looking place. See that? They're expecting us. Won't you go in, gentlemen? Thank you. Please forgive the somewhat odd way in which we summoned you, Mr. Holmes. The method was ingenious. I'm sure you must have a reason. Briefly, we wish to engage your services to take someone from England and deliver him to a place we shall designate. And the name of this person? That I am not at liberty to divulge. Gentlemen, I'm not accustomed to working in the dark. I bid you good night. Mr. Holmes, one moment, please. We are prepared to pay any sum you name, Mr. Holmes. I assure you, this is a matter of international importance. My dear sir, I realized that when I encountered the Prime Minister of Rovinia lurking outside an oyster bar in Soho, apparently for the sole purpose of stimulating my appetite for fish and chips. You deserve your reputation, sir. I take that you brought me here on a matter pertaining to... Uh, the death of His Majesty King Stefan in an automobile accident last week. His Majesty was not killed in an automobile accident, Mr. Holmes. He was assassinated. It's a great loss to the whole democratic world. Uh, won't you uh, sit down, Mr. Holmes? Thank you. Roger. Uh, permit me, gentlemen, to introduce my colleagues. Anton Petzval and Matthias Czerny. How do you do? My associate, Dr. Watson. How do you do, dear? How do you do? Uh, Mr. Holmes. Thank you. And Dr. Watson. Thank you, sir. A glass of wine, gentlemen. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, no, thank you. For several years now, a powerful group has been seeking to gain control of Romania for personal gain. The assassination of His Majesty was their first step in that direction. It is to prevent the second step that we have sent for you. For the sake of our people, it is imperative that King Stephen's son, Nicholas, be returned safely to his country. Is he here in England? Oh, yes. His Majesty has been educated at one of your public schools. A wise move, sir. Sir, I'm very sir. You feel that you yourselves are unequal to your task? We are up against a clever and ruthless group to whom we are all well known. Are they aware of His Majesty's identity? Oh, no. No one knows but ourselves. His Majesty was brought to England as a child incognito. Have you made any plans for his return to Rovinia? Uh, we have a plane in readiness to leave tonight. However, several stops will be necessary en route. And at any one of these stops, His Majesty's life may be attempted. Mr. Holmes, for the sake not only of our country, but for liberty and good government everywhere, we implore you to undertake this mission. Well, now, Holmes, you gave me your promise. You need a rest, you know. You've not been up the mark lately. I'm afraid we'll have to postpone our holiday, Watson. But think of your health. Sorry, old fellow. Gentlemen, in the interest of democratic government, I shall be happy to do my utmost to see that His Majesty reaches Rovinia in safety. We thank you, Mr. Holmes. Now, if we are to leave tonight, time is short, and there are certain precautionary measures that I should like to discuss with you. Watson, old fellow, come along. Or will you excuse us? Come along, old chap. I suggest that you return to Baker Street Pack a bag and have a car ready to take us to the plane. But Holmes, I don't like the whole business. I don't get lost. Lawson have been no, lost. No, don't get lost. I don't. I'll see you later. Good night. 
Now, gentlemen, may I have your attention? Certainly a forsaken spot for an airfield. <laughs> Certainly is. I feel like one of the babes in the wood. <laughs> Look out, Holmes, who's there? I imagine we've reached our destination. Everything is ready, Mr. Holmes. Now, uh, follow me. Your Highness, may I present uh, Mr. Sherlock Holmes? How do you do, sir? And uh, Dr. Watson. How do you do, sir? Delighted to meet you, gentlemen. I appreciate your kindness in undertaking this mission. Oh, not at all, sir. Well, I, uh, I am sorry, Dr. Watson, but I'm afraid you will not be able to accompany Mr. Holmes after all. Uh, the plane we had expected to use developed engine trouble, and this, as you see, is uh, only a three-seater. Well, just a minute, sir. Where Holmes goes, I go too. Well, no, I know, but... Uh... Well, first we lose our holiday, now this. I don't like your going off alone, Holmes. I don't like it at all. Come now, Watson. Whatever we must do in a good cause must be done. Look here. Rovinia isn't very far from the Mediterranean, and it has some excellent fishing. Why don't you take a boat? I'll meet you there. We'll have a holiday after all. Come to think of it, there's a boat sailing for the Mediterranean tomorrow. The Friesland, Swedish Africa Line, cargo and passenger. I have some influence with the director. Oh, that's very kind of you, sir. It's not just that I mind giving up our fishing homes, you know that. But hang it all, I want to be of some use. And you can be, definitely. I can be? Would you excuse us, sir? Okay. Watson. I don't like this convenient accident. Too many people seem to be in on this secret. When our antagonists discover we've separated, it's more than likely you'll be followed. So I want you to make yourself as conspicuous as possible. Decoy, eh? Sort of sitting duck. That's right. Oh, mm. fellow. Be on your guard constantly. Be wary of strangers, and whatever you do, don't breathe a word regarding my whereabouts. Don't you worry, Holmes. You can trust me. I know I can. So long, we, must, we must hurry, Mr. Holmes. I don't like it. Oh, yes, Dr. Watson. I'm very glad to have you on board, sir. My name is Johansson, the purser. Good morning, good morning. May I? Will you take Dr. Watson's baggage to cabin eight, please? Yes, sir. Sanford will be your steward. Good, good. Have you a cabin trunk, sir? Naturally. One doesn't go to the Mediterranean without a change of linen. Quite oh. so, sir. Oh, be careful of those fishing rods, young fellow, my lad. There you go, sir. Your cabin is very comfortably located on the port side of the ship, sir. Good. I hope I've got a nice reading. Excuse me. Purser, has anybody been asking for me? Why, no, Miss Woodbury. Not as far as I know. Oh, may I introduce uh, Dr. Watson, Miss Woodbury? How do you do? How do you do? Miss Woodbury is quite a singer, you know. She will be with us all the way to Alexandria. Oh, splendid. I used to sing a bit myself. Sounds like Loch Lomond and Pardon so me, <laughs> sir. You want in the laugh. Oh, excuse me. Certainly. You must sing it to me sometime. <laughs> Is this your first trip to the East, Miss Woodbury? Yes, and I'm tickled to death. Uh, American? In Brooklyn. Brooklyn? Yes, Brooklyn. I've been wondering, are you the Dr. Watson? Well, I'm Dr. Watson of 221B Baker Street. The one who is associated with Sherlock Holmes? Well, Holmes and I have been associated on quite a number of cases. <laughs> is Mr. Holmes with you this trip? Uh, no, as a matter of fact, he's gone. Gone uh, where? Well, he, he won't be along with us. He, uh, He's a very busy man. You know he relies very large on me. Came to see me off the stage. He said, Watson, I shall be lost without you. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry he isn't here. You see, I've heard so much about his work and yours. Oh, perhaps someday you'll let me give you an insight on some of our most interesting cases. <laughs> oh, Reggie. Who? Uh, excuse me. Reggie. Uh -huh. 
I was afraid you wouldn't get here in time to see me off. Here you are, Sheila. And try not to lose it again. Heavens, where was it? I thought it was in my cabin. You left it in my office yesterday. Now try to hold on to it. I don't imagine it'd be very easy to replace those arrangements in Alexandria. You can forget your music more often than any singer I've ever managed. I should have a secretary. All ashore. All vistas ashore. That might be a slight hint. Oh, you'll find Hassan a nice chap to work for. I hope I make good. You will. Good luck. Thank you. And don't lose it again. Oh, don't worry. I won't let it out of my sight this time. Sorry, sir. You have to go ashore now. Goodbye, Reggie. three-mile hike before each meal. Keeps one fit. Stimulates the digestion. That and a glass of milk. As I was saying, she was in wonderful voice. I shall never forget that last night at the old Adelphia. Pulled down now to make way for a cinema. Heartbreaking. Where would we be without the cow, Doctor? The cow? I haven't think so, do I? I'm sure Mr. Arnold here will be happy to help me in organizing deck games. Shuffle ball, deck tennis, medicine ball. Hiking! Shall I put you down to the three-mile hike before lunch, Dr. Watson? No, thank you very much. I prefer to sit down before my meals, relax and have a glass of sherry. Like Ferdinand the Bull. I am on a holiday. How does that little tune go? Oh, let me see. I'll, I'll think of it in a minute. Um, incorrigible. I have it. That's it. I can't. Then I'll put you down for the three mile hike before each meal. Yours? <laughs> Thank you, yes. There's a bag goes with it. Thank you. Oh, lunch. There's nothing like salt air to give one an appetite. Don't you agree, Mr. Arnold? <laughs> so long, Ducky. See you later. Aren't you coming, Dr. Watson? No, my dear. I'll join you later. All right. What would Holmes do? Mm -mm. I said sherry, Stuart. Carrying a revolver. <laughs> That's suspicious. And I tell you, so long as no one on the boat knows of our mission... Things can't be kept quiet indefinitely. Certain factions are still fanatically loyal to their royal line, you know. For enough money, the people will forget there ever was such a king. And once we have the body... White stripes. No. Can't be true. Holmes. Holmes gone. Dr. Watson. I beg your pardon, Dr. Watson. What is it? I'm sorry to bother you, sir, but there's a gentleman quite ill in cabin seven. The captain asked if you'd mind seeing him. No, no, I can't see anyone now. Well, we have no doctor aboard, sir. I've retired from practice. Well, the captain requested it, sir. The captain? Oh, where is he? So just follow me. It's the cabin adjoining yours, sir. Right this way, sir. The doctor is here, sir. Is it 
serious, Doctor? Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Can't you see I'm busy? Thank you, Sanford. Holmes! But the wireless said your plane crashed. No survivors. It was shot down, Watson. I don't understand. I'm terribly sorry, old fellow. I meant you to know the truth at the earliest possible moment. But, uh, as you know, I have a dislike of plans ready made by other people. They have a habit of becoming too widely known, and that uh, convenient accident to the original plane merely confirmed my suspicions. You mean you intended to take the boat all along? Certainly. I made the arrangements with the Prime Minister while you were at Big Street packing. Well, why didn't you tell me? Why let me make a fool of myself? You didn't make a fool of yourself. No one could possibly have known from your manner in coming aboard. That our young friend here and I were lying hidden below until the ship sailed. Your Majesty. Uh, you mean uh, your nephew, Nicholas Watson? What? Oh, oh yes, yes, of course, yes, yes, of course. It's my nephew, Nicholas. As I suspected, old fellow, our enemies acted promptly and ruthlessly, and it's only a matter of time till they find the wreckage of the plane and discover that we're not on it. Well, that may explain something, Holmes. There's a woman on board who, who carries a revolver and a handbag. She calls herself Dunham, Miss Agatha Dunham. If she is a she, from the look of her, I wouldn't be surprised if some man dressed up. Oh, it's not very uncommon for a woman traveling alone to carry a revolver. Yes, but there's another thing, Holmes. I just heard a very suspicious conversation between two men in the smoking room. Something about a fanatical faction and, and the body of a king. Oh. Hmm. I'd hoped my stratagem might give us breathing space for a day or two. What do you propose to do, Holmes? I, uh... I've made arrangements to hand Nicholas over to his friends in Algiers. The ship's first stop. They have the means to ensure the completion of this journey in safety. After which you and Dr. Watson will be able to continue with your interrupted holiday. After which we shall both need some relaxation. From the look of it, old fellow, you've already started. What do you mean, Holmes? Along the lines of relaxation, I mean. Brunette, young, beautiful. Well, I'm going to fit you all right, but how do you know? Brunettes, and I pay sufficient credit to your good taste to take the beautiful for granted. <laughs> now, if a girl and boy should meet, would you think it indiscreet if they had a friendly chat? I'm sure you'd find isn't any harm in that if they met again at four had a cup of tea or more then he said he liked your hat i'm sure you'd find there isn't any harm in that he holds your hand he thinks you're grand love takes command Before He's through, it's I love you. Now, if the girl should lose her head, and the boy and girl should wed, and they take a furnished flat, so what? That's fate. There isn't any harm in that. <laughs> delightful. Perfectly delightful. Now, how about that surprise you said you had? Oh, for you'll me. see in time. But first of all, you must keep your promise. You said you'd sing, Flow Gently, Sweet Afton for me. Oh, all right, if you really want me to. Oh, of course I do. I wonder if you'd hand me my music case, please. It, oh, it is. Ah. Oh, my I'm so sorry. Oh, no, that's all right. <laughs> I didn't hurt you. No, no. <laughs> ah. Here is my surprise. May I introduce my nephew, Mr. Nicholas Watson? How do you do? How do you do? And my friend, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. How do you do? Oh. I... Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Really, Watson, I've never thought of myself as handsome. And that's the first time in my life that a woman has run away at the sight of me. But hang it all, Holmes, something must be wrong. Obviously. Can I have a sherry? Please. No, thanks. Had you told her that I was on board? No, no. I just told her tonight that I had a surprise for her. 
seems to be rather an understatement. Two sherries, please. Yes, sir. I don't understand it, Holmes. She seems such a nice girl. She sings charming. My dear fellow, musical talent is hardly evidence of innocence. As a matter of fact, the late Professor Moriarty was a virtuoso on the bassoon. Thank you. Incidentally, under no circumstances, is Nicholas to be left alone at any time or for any reason? Oh, what are you going to do, Holmes? At the moment, nothing. I shall leave the first move to my antagonists. Cheers. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, my dear. Not that it is such a very good morning. Well, at least it, it's mysterious and attractive. Not all dirty and sinister like a London fog. Blasted noise. Kept me awake half the night. Oh, that's too bad. Would you be interested in a stroll around the deck? I'd like to. Well, come along then. But, uh... Watson, I think a walk on the deck is indicated. Well, not for me. Oh, yes, of course. Nothing like a good hike for the digestion. Can't see a thing. I don't dare entrust a message like that to the wireless. It might fall into the wrong hands. Nevertheless, we should get in touch with someone in authority at once. After all, there should be three bodies, not just one. We were told to use our own judgment about the best way to... Uh, pardon me, gentlemen. Uh, have you by any chance seen Miss Woodbury and... Uh... Uh, sorry, we haven't. Good morning. You're looking depressingly healthy. Or rather, three mile hike before each meal, old boy. I know. Good for the digestion. You haven't by any chance seen Miss Woodbury and my nephew, have you? Don't tell me you've lost the dear boy. The question is not, have I lost the dear boy, but have you seen him? Come, Doctor. A hunting we will go. Yes, well, I've already been this way. <laughs> you know, there's something fascinating about fog at sea. Gets you just as wet. Really is thick, isn't it? You can hardly see the water. It looks ominous. Yes, doesn't it? You're right about it being wet. You know, I have a feeling my nose is a sight. <laughs> it's a very pretty nose. Oh, liar. <laughs> <laughs> Good, look out. Oh. Well, thank you. I. Isn't it lucky you were here? Yes, isn't it? You, you startled me. I, I thought you were deep in your chess game. Oh, the lust is found, Doctor. I'm sorry, Holmes. It's a fog. Yes, so I observed. It's colder out here than I thought. Come, my dear. A good brisk hike will do you good. I'm sure the Doctor doesn't wish to continue now that he's found the dear boy. It appears that someone has been careless, Watson. I 
promise we never will part. With you, the trees in winter will look green to me. What you will mean to me can never be told Cross my heart Your vision will guide me Deep down here inside me Excuse me. Excuse me, will you? Nicholas. Something wrong? Excuse me, please. We're off Lisbon. Lisbon? We're not supposed to stop there, are we? I rather fancied we'd be getting some unexpected passengers aboard about now. Yes, I think added caution is indicated. In the last 24 hours, they've undoubtedly discovered that we are not on that plane, and we are on this ship. Those fellows, Kingston and Jerry, were outside the wireless room today. They said something about communicating with someone in authority. Could they... Possibly. Nicholas, Dr. Watson and I are going on deck again. I'm rather anxious to see who's coming aboard. Lock the door, will you? And don't open it, except to Dr. Watson or myself. Right. Going on deck, sir? Yes. Breath of fresh air. I see, sir. Did it occur to you that Stuart behaved rather suspiciously? Quite. I understand we've stopped to take on some cargo. Yes. Three passengers. Yes. Oh, Mr. Holmes, you startled me. Hello? Do you see three men have come aboard? So Miss Woodbridge just informed us. Lisbon, beautiful city. Too bad we shan't have a chance to pay the visit. The Mar de Paia, the Castillo San Jorge, the cloisters of the Geronimos, the Tower of Balaam. One of the most fascinating examples of Moorish architecture I've ever seen. Good evening. Mr. Holmes, is it not? Good evening. I'm afraid you have the advantage of me. Oh, that's a prize of fame, Mr. Holmes. Who on earth's that? I don't know. But I've seen his face before somewhere. Merco! I think, Watson, we'd better get back to your nephew. This way, it's quicker. I want you to move in with Dr. Watson until we reach our destination. Understand? Certainly, Mr. Hoffman. I think you want to keep him under your eye. I would, if it, uh... You want for that? I think Nicholas will be safer in an inside cabin. A porthole opening onto the promenade deck is apt to offer too many temptations to the three gentlemen in the cabin opposite ours, or anyone else who might be interested. Yes? Is there anything you require before retiring, sir? Nothing, thank you, Sanford. Good night. Good night, sir. Holmes, I don't trust that fellow.
Yes? Oh, good morning, Sanford. Good morning, Sanford. over there, will you? Breakfast will be served in half an hour. Coffee. <laughs> I don't see how you can drink the stuff. I never could stand it myself. Everyone in my country drinks coffee. My dear Nicholas, apparently you don't realize that it's tea that has made the British Empire and Watson what they are today. Well, we're both in pretty good shape, aren't we? <laughs> I thought it was the playing fields of Eton that were responsible. No, no, no. Only for the Battle of Waterloo. Oh, scummy looking stuff, even for coffee. Looks as if the cream had gone sour. Don't drink it. Why not? What's wrong? It's fortunate that you take cream with your coffee, Nicholas. I, I don't understand. It happens to be an idiosyncrasy of a cyanic acid group. It breaks up fat into globules. Cyanic acid? Do you mean to say that Nicholas was almost poisoned under our very eyes? If it hadn't been for the telltale appearance of the cream. Cold-blooded murder! Men who have engineered one assassination, Watson, will not stop at another. I owe you my life, Mr. Holmes. No, not me. Dr. Watson, with his keen sense of observation. Oh, thank you, Holmes. Has it occurred to you that steward chap was the only one who knows that you and I take tea and he takes coffee? You don't suppose Sheila? Possibly. Poison is a woman's weapon. A woman's weapon? That might include that Dunham woman, if she is a woman. Mm-hmm. Oh, mustn't overlook that little bearded fellow and his goggle-eyed friend. And don't forget the three charming gentlemen who came aboard last night. Good shot, Watson. Oh, thanks, old fellow. Was lucky, Dr. Watson. Not luck. Skill, Mr. Murner. Mirko, if you don't mind. M-I-R-K-O. Oh, sorry, old bean. Your turn, Mr. Holmes. You've, um... You've left your man unguarded. I don't think so. It will be more difficult to take him off than it appears. Your turn, Mr. Gregor. Oh, tough luck, partner. Unfortunate. Mm. And yet sometimes to leave a man unguarded may be a skillful trap for one's opponents. You flatter me, Mr. Gregor. I'm not as clever a player as that. You're too modest, Mr. Holmes. Mirko is most accurate. Afraid I'm not giving him much help. Are you conceding defeat then, Mr. Holmes? Oh, certainly not. But one always prefers to win. Even when the price of victory is too high? Of course, that all depends on the price one's willing to pay. Ah, well, that's it, Mr. Mirko. I'm afraid we're too good for you, old man. Yes. Mr. Holmes and I shall have to stand the drinks. Now, if you are skillful playing, Mr. Mirko, I wouldn't think of penalizing you. The drinks shall be on me. You are a good loser, Mr. Holmes. I suggest we all meet in the lounge after dinner. Right. Thank you for the game, gentlemen. The pleasure was ours, Mr. Holmes. Ah, now we can really see it. The rock of Gibraltar. We'll be getting to the Mediterranean soon, Holmes. Now that you have failed to warn Holmes off, our only safety lies in first eliminating him. But Holmes is not our objective. No, but he stands between us and our objective. It seems such a pity to eliminate Sherlock Holmes. You may accuse me of being unduly tender-hearted, but to destroy so great a man in order to reach our target. But a target we must reach before we arrive at Algiers. There's still plenty of time. You're right, of course. I should like to have given Holmes a chance, but... Good. Then tonight, it'll be done my way. You really enjoy your work, don't you, Mirko? I promise you that Mirko is more than competent. We cannot afford to take chances. And Nicholas must be disposed of before we reach Algiers. That's because you don't know Mirko. I've used him before and I promise you he never fails. Because your strong arm methods are apt to be too noisy. With Mirko, it's swift and silent. Understand? Satisfied? 
I'm sure Mr. Gilbeck is convinced. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Mirko insists that the losers pay off the bet. Oh, delighted. Won't you sit down? What do you have? A brandy, I think. Brandy. A whiskey and soda for me. Sure, right? whiskey and soda and three brandies, please. Penalty for losing the game. Uh, no ice in mine, Mr. Stewart. I can't think why they ruin good whiskey by putting ice in it. You see, Mr. Holmes, losing the game always carries a penalty, sometimes greater than others. Well, if one isn't willing to pay the penalty, one shouldn't play the game. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Your health and long life. Thank you. I think I'll turn in now. Oh, what happened to your charming companion? She said she had a headache and went to her cabin. I think it's time we all turned in. Gentlemen, I bid you good night. Twenty past ten. That's a good idea. Good night. Good night. Good night, gentlemen. Sit down. There's no hurry. It's over by now, no. My dear Mirko, try to cultivate patience. It's so much safer. Unfortunate, Mr. Mirko. These porthole covers are notoriously treacherous. I'm afraid you've broken your wrist. You, you pig. You shouldn't have played shuffleboard today, you know. When I saw that skillful hand on an erringly accurate eye of yours, I remembered the Circus of Medrano in Paris and your amazing exhibition of knife throwing. Good night. <coughs> Good morning, Mr. Holmes. Oh, there you are. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Mr. Gregor. I heard of your friend's unfortunate accident. Will you please convey my sympathy? It may take a long time to heal. You'll have to have patience, you know. I was explaining the advantage of patience to, uh, to Mr. Mirko only last night. Now, me, I'm a very patient man myself, and I always believe the result well worth waiting for. Don't you agree, Mr. Holmes? Patience has advantages under certain conditions. We are in accord, Mr. Holmes. Yes, aren't we? That fellow Mirko said he slipped and fell down while walking round the deck at three o'clock in the morning. Huh. Drunk, most probably. Possibly. He's got a nasty fracture. Took me over an hour to sit. I've got to sleep again. That's regrettable. Too bad you couldn't blame it on your insomnia. Insomnia? You know, I always sleep like a top. I don't think either of us is going to get much sleep tonight. Oh, you mean that woman's party? Silly creature. What on earth do you want to give a party for? I wasn't referring to Miss Dunham's party, Watson deadly as that will undoubtedly be. <laughs> no. This is the last opportunity our three friends will have to prevent our successfully carrying out our mission. We arrive at Algiers late tonight. Good morning, my dear. I should say the young lady isn't looking forward to arriving in Algiers with any very great pleasure. Have you noticed, Watson? She hasn't let our music case out of her sight since our first meeting? Well, now that you mention it, yes. I want you to ask her to sing, flow gently, sweet Afton, if she makes some excuse. Ask her if the music isn't in her case. Leave the rest to me. I think you'll see an interesting reaction. I'll do it now. I still haven't heard flow gently, sweet Afton. 
You promised to sing it for me, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm afraid I don't know it from memory. No, no, no. I won't take no for an answer. Perhaps you put the music for it here in your case. I'm afraid I don't feel like singing. I, I beg your pardon. What did I tell you? Interesting, isn't it? Interesting. But you is right. Come any nearer. If you do, I'll. I won't come any nearer, I promise. But uh, may I talk to you? My dear Sheila, I don't know yet just what you're in such mortal terror of, but I'm sure that whatever it is, you are an innocent victim. I don't know what you're talking. Well, to begin with, the way you acted the first time you saw me was a bit of a blow to my vanity, you know. Men are such vain creatures, aren't they? So I prefer to think that it was something unexpected that you found in your music case that caused you to react in such fashion. I saw nothing. Oh, come now, you must have. And since the quickest way to relieve fear is to share the cause of it with someone else, please forgive me if I attempt to find out just what it is that your music case contains. But I told you... Wait a minute. Come along, won't you? Please. Won't you sit down? Please. Now, it's unlikely to be important documents, since to know their significance, you'd have needed time to examine them. But there is one thing which is small enough to be easily concealed and which is highly valuable. A jewel or jewels. Then, uh, then there's this fellow, Hassan, in whose cafe you've been engaged as an entertainer. He's been suspected for years by the police of two continents as the largest receiver of stolen goods in the Near East. So, Circumstances would indicate that the jewels you found in your music case are both stolen and extremely valuable. And since there have been no other important robberies in London for some considerable time, I venture to say that you're carrying the, uh, the Duchess of Brookdale's emeralds. Am I right? You're quite right, Mr. Holmes. May I? I'd, I'd left the briefcase in my manager's office. He, he brought it to me just before we sailed. Yes. So Dr. Watson informed me. I, I recognized the emeralds from the newspaper description. Oh, Mr. Holmes, I've been so frightened. Don't worry, my dear. Don't worry. I'll return the necklace. And I assure you that the reward the insurance company has offered is yours. And will more than make up to you for any loss you may incur by the cancellation of the Hassan contract. And will enable you to go home to, uh... Brooklyn. Brooklyn? Well, I knew a most charming man who lived there once. Uh, he's now a resident in Sing Sing Prison. Oh. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to have to carry this briefcase around with me anymore. How can I ever thank you? If you really must thank me, please do so by singing Dr. Watson's song for him, will you? You're a darling. Extraordinary sight. Elementary, my dear fellow. And very pleasant. Slow, hmm? <laughs> gently, sweet afternoon among thy green braes. Flow gently, I'll sing thee a song in thy praise. My Mary's asleep by the murmuring stream. Flow gently, sweet afternoon, disturb not her dream. Thou stop down. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> oh, that looks very nice. Oh, may I help you? No, I want to put these favors around myself. I want to rearrange the seating. See, I'm using them as place cards. I've written a name on each. That nice fat gentleman. It was his suggestion. I 
charge you this I hope nothing goes wrong. Nothing will go wrong this time, my dear Mirko. Thank you. That was charming. I love that old song. <laughs> now you must sing for me, Doctor. You promised, you know. Well, if you like, but I haven't sung for some time. <laughs> there's, there, there's nobody here. Remember, you told me you, you used to sing a song, uh, what was it, Loch Lomond? Yes. <laughs> Come on now, Doctor, just to please me. By yon bonny banks and by yon bonny braes, where the sun shines bright on Loch Lomond, Nicholas, Dr. Watson, and this is me. There, I think that's done. Now I better have a few words with the chef to make sure that everything is taken care of. May I show you the way? Thank you. Hardly any difference. But to me and my true love, we'll never meet again on the bonny, the bonny banks of Colorado. Bravo, Bravo! I heard one singing at the Albert Hall. I didn't know you were there. My voice is a bit rusty. You're just being modest, Dr. Watson. It was delightful, eh, Jodry? Oh, delightful. But my dear Kingston, why would they have constructed it so large if it were not to accommodate three bottles? Mr. Watson, have you met Mr. Kingston and Mr. Jodry? I've seen them about. Mr. Kingston and Mr. Jodry are archaeologists. They're going to Egypt to excavate a tomb. And we've just received a wireless that the British government... Egyptian? Uh, Egyptian government has granted its permission. Oh, congratulations, archaeologists. They might have been dug up themselves. Watson, please. Sorry? Was that you singing, Ducky? I could hear you in the galley. Capital. Really, it was. What was it? Well, it was... Uh... Oh, it doesn't matter. Well, is everybody ready? The festive board awaits. Oh, we'll have a wonderful time, Ducky. <laughs> you observe I've rearranged the seating order. Why, see, Ducky. You're this end, oh, well, next to me. Are you at the other end of the table? Oh, you. Yeah. I'm not going to let you off, you know. <laughs> let me off what? Stop! <laughs> <laughs> this is our last night together, and you've been promising the whole voyage to tell me about one of Sherlock Holmes' adventures. Oh, oh you do. Please, 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 please do. Oh, isn't it a little early? No, no. no, no. Haven't we got a bit of wait till, till after dinner? Oh, oh, no. No. Well, why not start now? Oh, all right, now, let's see. Did any of you ever hear of the the giant rat of Sumatra? Oh, I know, no, but it sounds terribly gruesome. It certainly was. <laughs> it never got in the papers at the time. Too delicate a matter. I don't suppose it'll do any harm to tell it now. It all began one evening in Baker Street. Holmes and I were sitting in our rooms when suddenly the door opened slowly and in walked... Sit down. You're quite safe here. I wish it would happen. I don't like the suspense. My dear Mirko, as I have said before, patience is an admirable quality. You should uh, cultivate it. One of the old pea supers. Very rare, these. Oh, take it away, thank you. Now, I hope you all understand the topography of the place. It's important, devilishly important. Now, let me see if I get it straight. Between these two knives is the Thames. That's right, it's the Thames. And the cruet is the warehouse. The warehouse, that's right. And this boat is the salt no, cellar. No, the salt cellar's a boat. Oh, the salt cellar's a boat, of course. No, 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 the salt cellar's the boat. 
Come on, Sheila, where's your hat? Oh, I'm sorry. I was listening to your uncle's story. Here. Oh, dear, nothing happened. Here, take mine. Oh. Oh, no, you don't. No, this time I'm not taking any chances. I'm going to do it all myself. Wait a minute. I don't think there's a hat in that one. Why don't you take mine? I never wear paper hats. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Holmes, but I'm sorry you won't wear it yourself. I'm sure it'd be very becoming. <laughs> As I was saying, Holmes and I crept down the, the alley between the sinister-looking warehouses. Uh, this stalk of celery is Holmes, but it cheeses me. Oh, doctor. But when we reached the end of the alley, there was a blank wall, so, so we had to retrace our steps. There was nothing else to do. Was it a high wall? High, about six foot high. I tried to climb it, but I said, Holmes, it's absolutely ludicrous. So he said to me, what? There's nothing else for it. And back we turned. Oh, and down we had to go. Something has gone wrong. They've been down there for Keep a... quiet. It's at Holmes, I tell you. We should have got rid of him. Stay, stay here. Good evening, Mr. Holmes. Good evening. Party over so soon? No, I don't think so. I imagine the festivities are in full swing. I just don't happen to be much of a hand at uh, small talk and paper, paper hats. Oh, that's too bad. Now, me, I always enjoy that sort of thing. Really? Then perhaps you'd like a paper hat as a souvenir. This one was at uh, Watson's nephew's uh, place. I'm sure he'd like you to have it. Not interested? Oh, very well. Mm, that's curious. Good evening, Mr. Mirko. Nothing will go wrong this time, my dear Mirko. And after a desperate chase up the river in a police launch, the star finally apprehended the miscreants off Wapping. The freighter was towed out to sea and blown up. And London, all England for that matter, was saved from the terrible menace of the giant rat of Sumatra. Oh, oh, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. I don't think I left anything out, did I, Holmes? I beg your pardon? You're listening very closely. I asked you if I omitted anything. I don't think so. Nothing ever escapes your eagle eye. Oh, oh really? Thanks so much. Oh, here's my soup at last. Oh, I'm hungry. Oh, you oh, me. <laughs> Cheerio! Bye. <laughs> I can't believe this is our last night. It's funny, I can't either. Archaeologists going about like a couple of conspirators. You notice, Watson, that our three friends are conspicuous by their absence. Oh, now that you mention it, I don't see them anywhere about. Hello. We've stopped. Yes, we're off Algiers at last. Thank heavens for that. But we haven't yet delivered His Majesty in safety. I'm afraid I'll have to take Nicholas away. So early, but nobody's getting off the boat until morning. I'm sorry, I have a lot of packing to do. Oh, I see. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Are you having a good time? Oh, yes, he's wonderful. Eh? Oh, yes, it's been wonderful. Oh, has it? We can relax only when Nicholas is safely in the hands of his friends. You remember the identification they'll present? Yes, of course. Good. Get your hat and coat. I'll stay here with Nicholas until you return. Yes? The launch is waiting to take Dr. Watson ashore, sir. Thank you, Sanford. Good luck, old fellow, and hurry. You can rely on me, Holmes. Bye, Nicholas. Good luck. How long should it take him, Mr. Holmes? Oh, about half an hour, I think. No one could say it's not been an exciting trip. That was to be expected. We would all have died of boredom if it hadn't been. Yes? Sorry, Holmes, I forgot my pipe. Anything foolish, Mr. Holmes. 
I dare say you're surprised to see me, aren't you? In a way, yes. Impersonations are a hobby of mine. After Dr. Watson left the cabin, I managed to simulate his voice at the door. It was quite good. However, it was fortunate that you didn't hear it. Yes, isn't it? I think you must concede, Mr. Holmes, that the last trick of the game is mine. Oh. Go back! Oh. Our object now is not to kill Mr. Holmes, but to get the other one off the boat as quickly as possible. That's better. offer you our sincerest congratulations on the successful accomplishment of your so hazardous mission, Dr. Watson. Oh, thank you, Mr. Ravitch. I don't mind admitting it was one of our most difficult cases. Mr. Holmes is aboard the ship. Indeed he is. I left him guarding His Majesty. Our country owes you a great debt of gratitude, sir. Oh, it was nothing at all, sir. Nothing at all. <laughs> Follow me, gentlemen. Holmes! gentlemen correctly identified themselves? Yes, of course they have. Never mind about that now. Ring for the steward, will you, Watson? Hmm? Well, where's Nicholas? What have you done with him? Mr. Holmes, what has happened? Dr. Watson assured us His Majesty would be safe under your guard. Look here, Holmes, there must be some explanation. Gentlemen, I'm rather pained at your evident lack of confidence in me. Did you ring, sir? Your Majesty, King Nicholas. You're safe, sir. Heaven be praised. What? Your Majesty. Your Majesty? What are you talking about? King Nicholas? I don't understand. And the young man who assumed your identity, sir? He's safe and unharmed. We've just received word from the shore. Three men have been taken by the security police. But you let them tie you up and kidnap him. Naturally, that's ensuring their absence during His Majesty's safe arrival. I can't thank you enough, Mr. Holmes. Your Majesty's safe arrival is thanks enough for me. And you too, Dr. Watson. Thank you, sir. We had best be starting without further delay. Goodbye, Your Majesty. And Dr. Watson and I will not forget that we've had the unusual distinction of having our breakfast served to us in bed by King. Your Majesty. Goodbye, gentlemen. Thank Goodbye, you. Goodbye, sir. Why didn't you tell me? Didn't you feel that you could trust me? My dear fellow, you know I have the utmost confidence in you. It certainly doesn't look as though you had. My dear Watson, if you'd known the truth, you'd never have been able to treat His Majesty like a steward. Oh, well, didn't you think that I could play up? I was afraid that that honest face of yours might give the secret away. <laughs> yes, Watson, let me advise you. If you ever consider taking up another profession, never even think of becoming an actor. Hmm. 